So I recently got a new filter for my astrophotography setup because light pollution was getting a little bit spiffy over here. And let me tell you, this filter is absolutely revolutionary. I recently bought the Optolong L Ultimate dual narrowband filter for my setup, and this thing is a beast. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Optolong L Ultimate and giving you my thoughts and experiences while testing this filter out tonight. I'm gonna be discussing everything you need to know about this filter and which filters are best for you in your light polluted area because going with the most narrow filter in a decently light polluted sky might not be the best option for you. But if you're in a really light polluted area and you need something to eliminate all that light pollution, this filter might be the one for you. Tonight, I'm gonna to be testing this out on the North American Nebula, and I'm gonna be showing you guys the exposures coming in and the background and everything that this thing gets rid of because we have a full moon on our hands and a great light polluted sky here. So things are gonna be, well, a little bit tricky, but not for this little guy. So what are these filters really for anyway? And what is their purpose? Well, these are called dual narrowband filters and they're designed for taking pictures in light polluted areas with a one shot color camera. There's two camera types that you can really do in astrophotography. You'll have one shot color and then you'll have monochrome. One shot color is basically shooting this guy with a color camera. So that means that everything you see will come in full color for you. So you don't have to do any weird things with color if you're using a monochrome camera. If you're using a monochrome camera, that means that your pictures will come out black and white and you need specialized filters to get those colors for you. So in this sense, if you're using a monochrome camera, you're gonna have to use RGB filters, which are red, green, and blue filters to help get you a full color image. That's if you're in a less light polluted sky though. And if you're trying to isolate different gases in space, you're gonna wanna use sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen three filters, which are the three main types of gases in the night sky to photograph. For me personally, I like to stick with the one shot color because it's easier and less expensive for me and the only downside to using one shot color is that unfortunately monochrome cameras will capture more detail and light but the rule of thumb is more exposure the better of the picture so if you're fine with spending more hours of exposure time on a target then it shouldn't be much of a big deal for you now of course shooting in dark skies is the best option for getting any type of astrophotography picture but most of us these days live in somewhere like a neighborhood or town so here's the issue with that as i've said in many of my videos the problem is light pollution the less stars you see in the night sky, the worse. When all that outside light interferes with space, you really can't see a lot of stars at all. If you take an exposure, just a regular exposure of the night sky in a light polluted area, you might notice that it appears really bright. Now, if for example, if you took a picture in a dark area, you'll actually see more stars. And that is because there's less light interfering with the sky. The more lights that come in the night sky, the more the Milky Way and all the stars get shrouded out. This is something that is unfortunately irreversible, but luckily we've designed some things over the past few years that help fight this issue and they do it really effectively. One of the first narrowband filters that ever came out was the Optolong L Enhance. And basically what these filters do is, is they allow the certain bandwidths of light of space light to enter the filter and everything else it rejects or reflects. I purchased the Optolong L Enhance when my neighborhood was first being built. The skies here weren't that bright, but they also weren't that dark. So the Optolong L Enhance was the perfect choice for this. The reason I say that is because it's still a wide narrowband filter, which means that the bandwidths of light are still kind of wide. If you look at the graph of the Optolong L Enhance, you'll see that there is the full color spectrum there. You'll see that there's a little curve on the parts of where the filter lets in light and parts where it rejects it. And that's everything else where there's nothing there. So that means that all those other things that that filter doesn't let in completely doesn't let in. That means that those curves are the only points in the color spectrum where the filter lets in light. And that is exactly what we need if we want to focus on the red and blue light or the HA and O3. We go off a light pollution scale called the Bortle scale and it helps determine us how bright or dark our sky are. If you're living in a Bortle 0 slash 4 site, you can see the Milky Way pretty pronouncedly. If you're in a Bortle 5 to 6, you can kind of see it and it's really starting to get a little bit covered by light pollution. If you live in a Bortle 7 through 9 plus, things are really not looking good for you if you're an astrophotographer and you don't have a narrowband filter. When I first moved here, I was in a Bortle 5 slash 6, so I don't need the most narrow filter to isolate those details. The Optolong L Enhance is still a narrowband filter, but it doesn't really push the limits of narrowband filters. It's more designed for Bortle 5 slash 6 skies where light pollution is not that terrible, but you still need something to kind of fight it. So if you live in a Bortle 5 slash 6 area, I think the Optolong L Enhance is the perfect thing for you to buy. It's going to effectively get rid of a lot of those light pollution problems and it's going to help fight the moon pretty well. Now let's say that the skies are getting
getting a little bit worse and you might be in need for something that's a little bit stronger. The rule of thumb is the more narrow of the band pass you get, the better the picture and the better the light pollution that it eliminates. So if you have a wider bandwidth of light that the filter lets in, that lets in more light and that also lets in more light pollution. If you have a more narrow filter, then it's gonna eliminate more light pollution and it's gonna make sure that those bandwidths of light that it lets in are only specific to that color. So that means that it's going to shrink the amount of light pollution that it lets in and it's going to enhance more the nebula that it lets in. So that means more contrast, more of a spacey dark background and not a lot of light pollution is let in there. So let's say the skies are getting a little bit brighter from where you live and you might need need for something that's a little bit stronger. This is where the Optolong L Extreme came in about three years ago and it is one of the most popular filters for astrophotography. It lets in seven nanometers of HA and also seven nanometers of O3, which is the perfect thing for a lot of astrophotographers in light polluted areas. Before the new L Ultimate came out, this was considered one of the best filters for astrophotography because of its price point and the bandwidths that it let in. Seven nanometers for both HA and O3 is absolutely stunning. This will get rid of a lot of light pollution and that has a really narrow bandwidth of light. So that means that you can shoot nebulae even in the city and still get some amazing pictures. But even if that wasn't enough, Optolong just made a new filter a couple years ago that's even better than this one. It's really good. And this is where I decided to make the upgrade from my L Enhance to the L Ultimate, which lets in three nanometers of HA and three nanometers of O3. This filter is absolutely insane. It is strong. It is really strong. It's one of the most narrow filters out there right now on the market for one shot color. And I'd say it's probably one of the best dual narrow band filters in the entire astrophotography market. So let's dive into a little bit more of specs on this filter. Like I said, this filter lets in three nanometers of HA and three nanometers of O3. That is some of the most narrow filters that you could find out there. A lot of monochrome users use filters up to three nanometers and for a one shot color dual narrow band filter, that is absolutely insane. Insane. Because most monochrome users use filters that only let in one bandwidth of light, the fact that a dual narrow band filter, which lets in two bandwidths of light, both that are three nanometers, is some crazy engineering. If you want to buy this filter, it's $389. Yes, that's pretty pricey, but let's hope you have a job. I bought the two inch version, and there's also a 1.25 inch version that's a little bit cheaper, but I say go with the two inch version because that has the most versatility. If you're considering adding this filter to your setup, make sure that you're your telescope and your camera have a f 3.45 ratio and higher because this filter will experience something called band shifting if you have a faster f ratio system for your astrophotography rig if you have a fast f ratio system like let's say you're using a camera lens that is the Rokinon 135 f 1.8 or f2 lens make sure you're using something like the optolung l extreme f2 version which will not have any band shifting at all so yeah this filter is designed for a little bit slower f ratio telescopes but that is completely fine because the amount of detail you're getting in a picture is mind-blowing so here we have the box and this is the Optolong L Ultimate box and this is what you'll get right when you order this thing so you have the typical cool little Optolong box I guess and basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open it and we're gonna see what comes included and really just the only thing that comes included is the filter so you open it up and here's the filter and here you go, you have the filter right here. This is basically all that comes included with the box. It comes in a nice little styrofoam holder here. And what we're gonna do is just we're gonna take it out. And voila, there's the filter. I'll tell you one thing that I did notice when I got this filter is that the back side of this filter is actually kind of a golden yellow, which I found was kind of interesting. I hope you guys can see that on the camera here. But on the front, it's like completely white. So you flip it, and then it's yellowish on the back, which I thought was really cool. The Optolong L Enhance did not have this, which I thought was pretty interesting. So I'm wondering if that has to do with the smaller band pass, uh, bandwidth of light that it lets in. So three nanometers versus 10 to 25. So yeah, I mean, that's about it. That's, it's just a filter. I mean, there's not much to really look over here. So when you're not using it, you'll just put it in here. It has the, L Ultimate labeled right there so you guys know that this is the case for this filter so yep okay so we are out on the field right now it is nighttime it is a full moon you guys already know the conditions are terrible for people who don't have filters so 
Sorry guys. But here we have the Optolong L Ultimate and it's time to do our first round of testing. So right now I'm pointed at the North American Nebula, but specifically I'm kind of focusing on the Pelican Nebula. Kind of just shifted it over a little bit, but you could still see the North American Nebula in here too. And right out of the bat, as I'm looking at my phone, I'm seeing that I really don't see any gradients in this image. And gradients are coming from light pollution that's seeping through the filter and I don't see any right now. The background looks completely dark to me. I'm not seeing any weird color cast. Just with a five minute exposure, things are looking absolutely incredible. Now, if you were to compare this with some other filters, you might see that there are some gradients from light pollution leaking into the filter because of that wider band pass. Well, because this filter is three nanometers, things are a little bit different and they really don't let in a lot of light pollution at all. So I'm really happy to be seeing this. Another thing I'm gonna mention is the amount of contrast that you can see in this image. You can see a lot of nebulae and also a lot of the space gray background of space where there's just really nothing there. So the parts where there's not a lot of nebulae, you can really see just the space-like texture instead of seeing a washed out, light polluted, bright sky that kind of blends in with that image itself. So you're getting a lot of contrast between the nebula and the sky itself. Now I wanna mention one thing about this. When I first started focusing my telescope, I noticed that the stars that I was able to focus on were actually a lot smaller and it made it a little bit harder for me to focus my telescope. This means you might have to do a little bit of longer exposures when focusing your telescope just to make sure you collect more light. And honestly, it's not a big deal as long as you know what the exposure should be set to because this filter is narrow. It's gonna naturally not let in as much light as a broader filter. So with all that being said, do I recommend this filter? 100% absolutely. Look at the subs coming in, the results speak for itself, and I will have two images to share at the end of this video for you guys, so you guys can really see the potential that this filter has. And I'll also include 15 minutes of data, which is only three exposures, so you guys can really see what this filter is capable of. I wanted to do this review because there wasn't a lot of reviews out there on YouTube on this filter. It's still relatively new, so I kind of understand. But honestly, I really think this is going to be a great filter in the near future. I do think it's replacing the Optolong L Extreme, and I think this is one of the best filters on the market right now if you're in a light polluted area. With a three nanometer band pass, it literally makes it impossible for lights to enter this filter. Like it's, it's, it's so narrow. I mean, how can you even complain about it? Sure, you might not be getting all the light that you necessarily need, but that makes up for it by having more contrast and detail, sharper stars. Everything is just great about this filter. In my my experience so far. So I will keep on continuing to get more images with this filter throughout the summer and probably throughout the entire time that I have this filter because I don't see any reason of getting rid of it right now or even in the distant future because three nanometers is about the strongest filters that we have on the market right now. So I'm pretty sure this thing will be sticking around for a while. If you guys are considering buying this filter, make sure you check the link in the description where you will be able to see where I purchased this filter so you can make that decision for yourself if you wanna buy this filter or not. I'm gonna reveal the full images right now of the results from this Optolong L Ultimate filter and I hope you guys took something home from this video learned a little bit more about narrowband filters and why strength matters with these kind of filters I'll see you guys in the next one clear skies